Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are using AppGyver or are looking to use AppGyver to make a mobile application for whether it be Android, iOS, or maybe even a web app, and you're looking to make this application a little bit different, maybe you want to make it stand out or implement some cool new features, but just aren't quite sure what's available, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering some really cool options in this video. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now, if you're new to the AppGyver platform, in short or in summary, it's a free platform for people or indie developers making under $10 million in revenue. I believe that's their current policy. You can check their pricing page. If you're new to it, I have an AppGyver tutor App Tutorials playlist on my channel. Feel free to check that out as well. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. We'll assume you have the basics of AppGyver from those tutorials or your own research. So the first thing I want to cover is we're going to drag over a button and we have some text here. So we're going to change this and just make it test. And we're going to call this test one. And then we'll change this. So maybe we want the layout to be a little different. We want this to be center aligned. And then we will change this next to test two. And we will do the same thing. So we're going to go to layout and we'll center align this. Now, what we're going to do here is for this second option, we're going to make this visible. So we're going to set it to false. So it's not going to be visible, but it'll still be on the page. And the next thing we're going to animate this. So what we're going to do is if you go to click on test and we're going to add logic. Now, you may notice when we go to the flow functions market. So if you click on in this market, it should be available in any of these three tabs. There, there is a front end logic section. So there's a bunch of different options here for logic that you can add in. Some of this could be very useful for you. So if you want to add logic, you can add it there, but we need to install it from the component market first. So we're looking for front end logic. So we have a couple of things to download. The first thing we're going to download, we're going to scroll through and see if we can find, uh, so we're looking to animate and we are also looking to let's see we're going to show all so we are looking for the animate logic so we'll see if we can search for this so there's animate component and we'll click install and then we will go back and we'll go to front end logic and you can also go to different areas so maybe if you want to go to the data or the theme or back end logic but for front end logic, we're just going to find the animate. And then we are also going to try to find one for visibility. So we are going to scroll through and there's, let's see, down here, show component. And we're going to install this as well. Now, once we've done this, you'll see we have these two in this installed section here. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to add one more button and I just want this is just to explain how these work. So the button one is going to be we're going to call this animate and button two we will make this show. Now one thing to note is you can tie these features or functions to page load. So if you click on page uh, layout when page focus or page mounted, you can bring over these and animate certain areas, but we're going to do it on a button click. So for animate, we'll bring over animate component and then we'll select component and title one, which is the title we want to animate and it'll animate when we click it. The next one for show, we want to bring over show component, which will change to the value to visible. And then we're going to view component and we're going to go to title one or actually we're going to go to text one because that's the one we made uh, we changed to not be visible then we're going to click save and we're going to go to launch distribute and open build services i apologize we're going to go to preview so the main reason we're running to preview is just so i can show you how this works so we're going to open up our test app here so when we click animate you'll see this component bounces so kind of a cool option there. And when we click show, you'll see test two is now available. So between these two components, there are tons of different options. For example, if you could imagine an application where by clicking a button or by doing something from the user's end, something becomes visible, that's where this would become 
an option to show that component. And you also have the ability to animate on page load, for example. So if we wanted to, we can cut this by hitting Control X and go to page loadout and then go to the logic again. And then we can connect page focused to animate and click save. And when we go over here and refresh the page, you'll see that the test animates once the page loads. So really cool, and you can see again the show function makes this second text visible. So those are two really cool and incredibly easy features to make your app stand out and look a little bit different. But there are a couple of other things that we could consider here. So another thing to consider is the component market. So there are tons of other options in here. For example, if you've looked into my channel, you've seen that we use a lot of the repeated variables, for example. So if we were to install, there are a couple in here that you're going to notice. For example, this option here is an image card list with header. And then you'll see directly from a data resource. So if we install this and drag this over, you have the ability to have this scroll list with cards by connecting it to your data resource. So when you click configure, you can connect your data resource here, add any data resource you may have available, and you can work through how to get that set up on your own time. But this is a really, really cool option for you. Now, one or two others I wanna cover real quick. So one that I thought was pretty cool as well is this right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just show you the, the summary of it. But the idea is a marker map container. So it's a container that allows you to render markers based on points the user taps. So we'll bring this over just to show the logic. But the idea here is you choose an image, marker size, marker name. And you can see all of the settings here, like radius to catch markers, what the markers are. So you can see how to set up the mapping or set the binding here. So that's another option. And you can view the docs for most of these resources. And then the last thing that we'll cover as we're just sort of scrolling through this, um, I've covered this in previous videos, but you have a date picker here. Um, but what I really like is the HTML renderer and the web view component. I think those are incredibly useful. So the web view would probably be in my top five out of everything we've covered today. And basically this is a simple and easy way to view a web page within your application. So what we can do is we can type in www. and then you can put any website. So we'll use google.com. And then when we go refresh the app, you should see if we can get it to load. Now it won't load in this view here, unfortunately. And you'll see right here, the web view will be rendered when running your app on a mobile device. So unfortunately we can't get the web view to render, but it would normally show Google's web page right here. And then if you want to refine this further, you can actually adjust your position and size and you can set this to be part of the screen size instead of all of it. So it's a couple of options here to make your application a little bit more um, unique, for example. So one more thing I want to show you as to how to kind of make this your own, so to speak, is if you wanted to bring in images, you could click show. And when you have the logic set up, you could have the show component and make it the image by selecting it from this dropdown. The only thing you have to remember is to select the image and make the visibility false in order for this to work. But again, tons of functionality and options. Some of these, like the web view, for example, need to be done in a mobile browser or mobile device. So what you can do is download the AppGyver preview app and it will show this uh, essentially as it would function on a mobile device. So I hope these gave you some really cool tips and tricks. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.